My scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter, beginning in the first verse. A rather long passage today, but we'll uh, see how it goes. John chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. <coughs> so the sisters sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified in it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of his word. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go so that I may awaken him out of that sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, so that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their, her, their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. When she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to weep. Therefore, when Mary came to where Jesus was, she saw him 
and fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? So Jesus, again being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was against it. And Jesus said, Remove the stone. And Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. Therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying, What are we doing? For this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all the men will believe in him. Then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people and that the whole nation not perish. Now he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation and not for the nation only but in order that he might also gather together into the children of God those who were scattered abroad. So from that day, they planned together to kill him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> My message today is entitled, The Glory of Love. And no, it's not about that cool Peter Cetera song from the 80s. But it is about the glory of God and God's love for us, which proved that he was master over death. Love cannot be defeated by death. Love Proved that with Lazarus and proved it again in the very body of Christ Jesus. There are so many things going on here, but it all led to the glory of God, the glory of love. Here we have two people, a few people, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus, we've seen these people before. Jesus has visited them several times. We've heard the story about Martha and Mary and how she was busy doing stuff. And Mary was hanging on Jesus' every word. And Jesus was like, Martha, calm down and have a seat. Just take it easy. It'll be okay. We heard that Mary was the one who came and cried at Jesus' feet and anointed his hair with oil. And now their brother, Lazarus, has gotten sick and he's died. And so, well, before he dies, Martha sends word to Jesus, hey, Lazarus is sick, please come help.
But then listen in verse 4. When Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified in it. And that's probably a key verse in this passage. But it's probably not a message from God that we necessarily like to hear. Because what does that really mean? Of course, Jesus, being the Son of God, knew what was going to happen. He knew that he could go now and heal Lazarus, and some people would believe that. But he wanted to show the people that he had power over death. And his time himself was drawing near. And so he wanted to make this public gesture. For that, Lazarus would need to die so he could go and raise him from the dead. Now, I'm sure that wasn't too fun for Lazarus and Mary or, or Martha. And in our own lives, it is often not comforting when we think about that our sufferings that we've experienced in life may be in part for the glory of God. For him to show his love and mighty power and caring. But we cannot deny that, that is the truth. <clears throat> but it's clear that Jesus was not just doing this for the glory and self-interest. It says in verse 5 clearly, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He did love. So he stays two days longer. And then decided, well, well, we'll head out. And he tells his disciples, our friend Lazarus is falling asleep, but I'm going to go wake him up. And of course here Jesus is using a euphemism, which in the Bible times they often use sleep as a euphemism for death. Now um, we usually use it as a euphemism for sexual relations. You know, Mary's sleeping with John. Whereas in the Bible times they say, if John is sleeping, well, he's dead. And his disciples, well, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, and he told them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. But now let us go to him. And you see, you notice here there's another story going on. So the heat's been turned up and the Jewish leaders are already looking to put Jesus to death. And so his disciples aren't too keen on going back to Judea right now. And so interestingly, you notice in the beginning of the passage when they get word about Lazarus being real sick, none of them speak up and like, well, hey, Jesus, let's hurry up and go and, and you can heal Lazarus. They were all like, oh, well. And then Jesus is like, oh, he's falling asleep. Oh, oh, good. Well, then he'll be okay. We don't have to go, right? No, we need to go. But uh, Jesus, you know, they're, they want to kill you down there near Jerusalem. Yeah, so... Okay, and then my, my good buddy Thomas. i got to love Thomas, you know. He's, he's the one who's going to ask the stupid question, who's going to say the thing that nobody else will say. Good old Thomas. I love that. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, well, let us also go, so that we may die with him. What the heck? Let's just go. Now, and of course, he goes to Bethany. And, you know, at this point, he's got such a following and crowd, he doesn't even get into town, and already people at, at Mary and Martha's are like, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And so Martha gets up, you know, runs out, and, and goes and meets him. Now we have a couple of interesting exchanges here. Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You notice later, Mary, 
when she comes also, says, let's see here. Mary came where Jesus was and saw him and fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, that's true. Both Mary and Martha made a true statement. Had Jesus been there, he would have gone and he would have been healed. But that wasn't Jesus' plan. And this here shows a second aspect of something that we all struggle with and something I know I have struggled with, personally, is our preconceived notions about what God's going to do. Mary, Martha, and me all have this idea in our head about how it should go. Okay, we're going to pray, and then God's going to step in, and He's going to do this, and He's going to do that. But unfortunately, I found in my own life, and Mary and Martha experience it here, that God's plan uh, isn't whatever X, Y, Z we had in our head going, going forward. But God's got a better plan. A plan that will be more than we'll ever imagine. Or at least some of us. Because listen to Martha. So Martha spouts the, the regular, well, you know, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. But listen to what she said. Martha said to him, I know, women, even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. You hear that? She's like, well, you know, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. But you know, since, uh, you know, maybe like your God, uh, maybe you could, uh, you know, if you ask, I'm sure God would do anything for you. Talk about being passive aggressive here. Um, but she's hoping. She's hoping for something more. The impossible. That her brother, that Jesus would ask and be raised. And God would raise him from the dead. I mean, because, you know, it happened occasionally in the Old Testament. You know, it happened a few times in the Old Testament. So she's probably like, you know, God could do it, maybe. And then Jesus says to him, says to her, your brother will rise again. Now, of course, Jesus means right now. <laughs> but, of course, she mistakenly takes it for the things people say, you know, at funerals. You know, well, you'll be together in heaven. Which is true, you know. But it, you know, she took it for it and she says... Yes, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Yeah, I, I, I know my Old Testament scriptures, Master. I know that the end will come and there will be a resurrection and, and all will be right. And then Jesus cuts her off. Oh no, you don't get it. I am the resurrection. Dun, dun, dun. Hear the music in the background playing. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? That is the truth of God. This is what he wanted to show his glory. That guess what? I'm God. I am life. I am the resurrection. Believe in me, you may physically die once and we put your husk in a grave out here. But guess what? You get new body and you live forever with me and all the believers. Yeah. Amen and amen. And then here, Martha, like Peter, affirms Jesus' divinity. She said to him, Yes, Lord, 
I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And then she ran away to get her sister. She's like, all right, this is it. God is here. And so she calls Mary, and Mary jumps up. Here's Jesus, jumps up and runs out the door. And all, all, all the guests, like at the funeral, are like, what the heck? Oh, she must be going to the grave to cry. All right, well, let's all go. And so, the, you know, the big crowd heads out. Therefore, and of course, Mary falls down before him. And then, you know, Mary's there and she's crying and everybody else is crying. And he's like, all right, well, where have you laid? And, and you know, they take him to the tomb. And Jesus sees the pain and anguish that everyone feels. God never, ever let it be said that God doesn't care about how you do. He absolutely, positively does. He's here. He's there. He's experienced it. He saw the pain and anguish that death and funerals bring. And you, you, you've been there, I've been there, we've been at the funeral, and you know, it's, some of them are, are, are more silent and reserved, and others are just weeping and lamentation and gnashing of teeth. And rightly so. Because death is a horrible thing. That's why Jesus came to defeat it. Jesus wept. He wept for them, the suffering and the pain and the anguish that they went through. And he wept for the fallenness. And so the Jews saying, look, see how he loved him, which he did. We've already established that in verse 5. 